Chapter 7 Lacuna Part 1 Hmm. Three soldiers wearing Galbadian uniforms were running across what looked like a forest that had been recently set on fire. Some parts were charred, a great deal was still green, just waiting to burn. None of them were wearing their regulation helmets. The man in front, with long black hair, had an open smile on his face as he jogged easily across the forest terrain. The machine gun strapped over his shoulder was outdated but in pristine condition as it jerked against his equally old armor. The darker-skinned man behind him was watching his back critically as he followed. Three long, thin braids fell down his back, bouncing as he sprinted. He had a pair of unadorned Qatar daggers at his waist, gleaming in the light with a slight sheen of monster guts that he had yet had a chance to clean away. Behind him, a very large man in both girth and height just looked a little alarmed. He kept glancing back as though he expected someone to be following them. Strapped to his back was an enormous harpoon with a spear that kept biting into the dust under his feet. All of their armor looked so... outdated. What they... Hey. Uh, Laguna, the concerned man in the middle finally spoke up as they ran through the trees. Are you sure this is the right way? He had a Galbadian accent. Where am I? Dream. The man in the backside when the man up front gave no answer. Which was enough of an answer for both of them. Oh boy. Not again. Still laughing without a care, the long-haired man in front turned on his heel and used the protruding root of a tree to cross a small, quickly moving stream. Hey, uh, aren't we here to fight a war? The man in back asked, frowning up at him. It seemed a strange thing to need to remind a person of. You know, against the almighty timber army? Any of this ringing a bell? Yeah. Why are we wasting our time running through this forest messin' with these animals? The man in the middle asked, stopping to glare with his hands on his hips. The man with the machine gun stopped as well and turned, scratching his head awkwardly. He laughed and it was a pleasant sort of sound, even sheepish as it was. Well, you see. It's just that, uh... That was really all the man in the middle needed to hear. Kiros tossed his braids over his hair. Don't tell me that we're lost again. Laguna cleared his throat and looked forward. Deliberately not answering. Hey anyway, we're going home. Deling City, here we come. Get your fun hats on boys. He started running away and Kiros and Ward shared a look. He's totally lost, Ward mumbled. Remind me why we follow him around, Kiros responded just as dully. Ward shrugged, shaking his head. Wait up, Laguna. Laguna was completely, totally lost. Nothing he could say or would ever say would convince either of his comrades that he wasn't totally lost. So when they chanced upon a military jeep in the middle of the woods, no matter that he said that was his intended target all along, they knew it was an accident. Laguna always seemed to stumble on just what he needed at any given time. He was the personification of the phrase that it was better to be lucky than good. The soldier whose jeep got stolen, not so much. Deling City was the capital of progress and beauty. Old world architecture met with the very best minds of the age to create a wonderful utopia of a city. Their hometown. A more wonderful place surely couldn't be found anywhere. Laguna stopped his stolen jeep right in the middle of all of it. H. Hey! Ward gaped, 
staring between the jeep's controls and his friend who was already climbing out of it. You can't park in the middle of the street. Laguna. Chill, man, it's cool, Laguna laughed like he was silly. Aren't you just happy to be alive? Mmm, take in a deep breath of that city air. We're home from war. So how's about a drink? Immediately, realization came over his friends' faces. His act hadn't fooled them a bit, though he continued smiling at them innocently. Whatever, Kiros threw back his braids again, grinning at him as he stepped from the jeep. Like you even drink? We both know you're not in it for the drinking. Just be a man and admit it already. Yeah, Ward laughed good-naturedly, putting his foot down onto the pavement but leaning back into the seats. You're just going to drink some juice like a weenie. Then gawk at the piano lady. Laguna sputtered, his face turning bright red. Did Dante call her the piano lady? That's it. Forget it. I'm not going. He turned, crossing his arms over his chest. The display only had his friends laughing. Yeah, sure, Ward nodded as though he might be agreeing. We all know you will, Kiros grinned. Laguna stood strong for only a few seconds more. Then, ignoring his friends, he turned and began walking determinately up the street. He didn't uncross his arms and his friends at least pretended to stifle their laughter at him. They followed him down to the Galbadian Hotel. More accurately, to the lounge underneath the Galbadian Hotel. They had the best drinks in the city. Not to mention the best entertainment. Welcome. The pretty waitress beamed as they came down the stairs, looking up from the drink menus in her hands. A smile lit across her face as he recognized them in turn. Oh, Mr. Lawyer. Mr. Seagill. Hey, Ward. Your usual table. They were very familiar words. Laguna knew that he knew all of those words and that they came together in a simple, comprehensible sentence. Something was lost when they hit his ear and traveled to his brain though. He was suddenly so confused. Hey. Excuse me. Hey. Excuse me. He repeated, shaking his head to get the fuzz out. Kiros frowned at him. What's wrong? Ah, Laguna scratched at his ear in discomfort. As though he might be able to physically dislodge the fuzz. I'm not quite sure. Wait a second, Ward frowned at the move. He very dearly wanted to do the same thing. Is your head buzzing? Laguna jumped, turning with wide eyes. W what? You, too. Yeah, Ward nodded quickly, hitting at the side of his head almost hoping to be able to dislodge the annoying sensation. Ever since we left Timber. They looked to Kiros and he frowned, nodding. Yeah, me too. They stared at each other, worried for a moment. Then Ward grinned. H hey, we're just tired, that's all. We'll be fine after a drink or two. Or three. You know, whatever. Right, Laguna laughed, still touching at his head. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. So, January, Ward turned to the server girl. Our usual table would be just fine. Absolutely, she said, hurriedly putting a smile back on her face. This way please. What is this? Just shut up, please. Laguna yelled, knocking at his head. This buzzing is going to drive me crazy. Ignore it, Laguna, Kiros told him pointedly as they made their way to the table. Ward is right, we're probably just tired. 
We did just leave a war, after all. Right? Laguna nodded, lowering his hand. Really, so long as he wasn't focusing on it, the buzz wasn't really that terrible. Sort of. Is this a dream? Laguna's pretty cute. What's going on? W what's happening to me? At ease, men. Laguna called officially as they stood over their table. As a unit, the three of them dropped down at their favorite spot. Well, Laguna's favorite spot. The two of them really just tagged along because he wanted to be here. We're going all out tonight, boys. Everything is on me, so you just drink up. May I take your order? January the waitress asked. She didn't bother to pass out the menus. She already knew what they would say. The usual. Laguna beamed. Me, too, Kiros nodded, thanking her. Keep em coming. Ward laughed. Thanks, January. A sudden silence over the room told them that she had come down. Laguna was doing his best impression of a statue, staring down at his feet like they were suddenly the most fascinating things in all the universe. Ah, Laguna, Ward grinned, leaning back. The Pay No Lea, Julia is making her appearance. And she's wearing that stunning red dress again. Oh. Yeah. That's a good one. You go in for it tonight. Oh man, not the red dress. That one was a knockout. Go for it, Kiros nudged him smiling. Whatever, man. Can't you see she's working? There was gentle clapping from the crowd punctuating his sentence as she took her place on stage. Come on, go wave to her. You don't want to just stare at her for the rest of your life, do you? You have to try something. Give me a break. Laguna sounded sick to his stomach. So you say, but we know you'll do it, Ward grinned. Laguna lifted his head as Julia the piano lady sat down at her instrument. It was said that the owner of the hotel had moved that gorgeous grand piano down here just for Julia. People said that to hear her play was to listen to the angels sing. And to look at her face was a surefire way to lose your heart. Julia Hartley was easily the prettiest woman in all of Galbadia. Deep ebony hair down to her shoulders framed a heart-shaped face with a delicate nose and a deep pair of stunning brown eyes that could cut a man down to the soul. Her willowy body was always wrapped in a delicious, thin dress that usually revealed the skin of one of her long, creamy legs. Laguna had been a fan of hers before she had been invited to play at the Galbadian Hotel. He attended every concert and performance that the army didn't interfere in. He cursed the mandatory service laws that forced him into the military because they took him away from her. Even if they had introduced him to his two best friends. Gathering his courage, what little of it he had, Laguna got to his feet. Behind his back, his friends shared a grin. He tried to block them out, block everyone out, as he neared the stage. The closer he got, the prettier she was. He couldn't tell in the low light of the lounge if she could see him or not, so he kept moving in. Ah, to be this close to Julia. Is this guy serious? Laguna froze in place as he felt a familiar, debilitating pain shoot up his calf. His leg curled upward with his foot as he hunched over in pain. Crap. His leg was cramping. He was too nervous being this near her. Arg. It hurt so much. Oh, no. She was staring at him now. Sad. Laughing nervously, 
Laguna gave the beautiful pianist a wave. Then he turned and quickly began limping back towards his table. The cramp began letting up the further from her he got and the less nervous he felt. Good work, Laguna, Kiros nodded, trying hard not to laugh at him. Mission successful. Ward agreed. Technically. Take your seat, Kiros indicated next to him. Laguna plopped down gratefully. His heart was racing so fast he thought it might leap from his throat. I didn't think you would actually do it, Ward laughed, contradicting his earlier words. Our popularity rating's definitely gone up a full point for that. Yeah, Kiros raised his eyebrow at Laguna rubbing his leg. You cut a pretty pitiful figure up there though. I'd say you're about a negative three on the manliness scale. He was a negative three on the manliness scale before, Ward laughed loudly. Say what you want, Laguna threw himself back into the seat, breathing hard like he had just escaped a big battle. Man. Julia sure is pretty. They were so busy congratulating him and nursing bruised egos that none of them noticed that the music had stopped. Kiros looked up as he spotted something on the edge of his vision. His eyes went wide as his body locked up. Ward looked up as well and his mouth fell open. Ah! Hey! Ward cleared his throat quickly, gathering himself. Hey, Laguna, we're taking off. Hey. Laguna turned to his friends to see them standing. H. Hey. What's the rush? It's on us tonight, Ward said to a frowning Laguna that had jumped to his feet. Relax and stay a while. You must be tired from all those battles against the Almighty Timber Army. Laguna looked puzzled. What are you talking about? May I? Her voice was sweet and melodic. Far more rhythmic than he would have expected. Laguna jumped and turned. A wordless, strangled sound escaped his throat as he realized that Julia, the Julia, was standing right there. She was right there. Pain sliced through his calf as the nervous cramp came on once again. Laguna limped over to make room for her in the booth. Kiros and Ward had already bailed. He was both grateful and desperately needy for them to return. Did I interrupt anything? Julia asked, tilting her head adorably. And 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 not at all, Laguna stuttered terribly. He cleared his throat to get rid of it. P please, S sit down. Smooth. She slid in beside him with all the grace and elegance of a queen. Wow, she was pretty. Ah. He could see all the way up the slit of her dress right to her creamy thigh. And he could smell her perfume. And those eyes were devastating up close. Oh man, oh man. It was really her. She was right there. What was he supposed to do? Kiros. Ward. Why would they abandon him right when he needed them? What was he even supposed to say? Hein, she was so pretty. What is this guy thinking? Are you okay? Julia asked kindly. Okay. No, he was not. Julia was right there. How's your leg? She clarified with a smile. L leg. What was that thing again? Oh, this. Why yeah, no it's fine. It happens all the time when I get nervous. He coughed and looked away quickly as he realized that maybe that wasn't the most charming thing he could have said. Julia was smiling at him though. Were you nervous? Oh, yeah, 
he laughed nervously, as though to drive the point home. I still am. Kinda. You can relax, she said, leaning over the table towards him. And he was anything but relaxed. You don't have to get nervous around me. Eh sorry, he said lamely. He was dropping points so fast on the manliness scale. Say, Julia looked around before dropping her voice to a whisper. Would you like to talk somewhere more? Private? I have a room here. Why your room? Laguna belted out, leaping to his feet. Oh, man, his leg hurt. Seriously. Well, Julia looked around with an amused grimace. It's pretty hard to talk freely here. Everyone is listening in. Laguna looked up. He had been so focused on the fact that Julia was right there talking to him that he actually forgot about the other patrons at the bar. All of them, including Kiros, Ward, and January the waitress were not even trying to hide the fact that they were eavesdropping. If you would like to, please come by. I've been wanting to talk to you. Laguna said nothing, trying to process what was happening. Julia turned back to him and her face fell slightly, those big eyes got, if possible, bigger. You don't want to? Of course I do. Laguna hastened to assure her. He was rewarded with a sweet smile. It is a pretty smile. I can give him that. Still pathetic though. Then I'll go ahead and wait for you, Julia stood, straightening the skirt of her dress. Ask for my room at the front desk, okay? Laguna nodded, his whole body going numb. He just kind of stood there, his cramping leg on fire, as he watched as she calmly moved back towards the stairs and up. He could still see the skin of her bare leg and it tempted him so. Was he dreaming? This is a dream. This is a dream. No. It couldn't be a dream. This is too weird to be a dream. Julia? She wanted to talk to him? That would never happen in his wildest dreams. He talks to himself too much. And just the two of them. Woo boy. He really needed to get it together. Whatever. Laguna shook his head, clenching his fist in determination. He always screwed things up with women by talking too much. They didn't like that. But not this time. He was all ears for Julia. It was time to dust off his manly charm and show her what a good listener he was. Ugh, I think I'm going to be sick, he mumbled, clutching his gut. Kiros and Ward were trying to be good friends by hanging back by the bar now. With Julia gone and therefore the show over. They were sipping at their drinks and pretending they weren't watching him critically to see what he would do. It took Laguna a couple minutes to actually work up the courage, and work down the leg cramp, to be able to move towards the stairs. He could feel everyone's eyes on him as he took the very same path Julia did to the ground floor and the reception desk. As he got in closer, the man working the desk smiled at him. Welcome. Are you checking in? Ah. Laguna let out a long, wordless breath of air. He cleared his throat. Um, er. Well, um. Ha <laughs> he, it's not that, um. The receptionist cocked his head, his eyebrow going up in confusion. Laguna cleared his throat and tried again. We we which are our room is Jeju, JJJ. Ah. Is he really going? 
Uh, the receptionist looked confused. Mr. Laguna Lawyer. Ah. He knew his name. Which meant that Julia knew his name. A-H-H-H-H. Calm down. The receptionist smiled through Laguna's reaction. I've been expecting you, sir. Let me show you to Miss Julia's room. The receptionist led Laguna up to the third story of the hotel. Laguna counted each step. The receptionist knocked on the door to her room. Laguna held his breath. Come in, she said from beyond the wood. The receptionist opened the door. Laguna almost tripped over his cramping leg. The door shut behind him and Julia smiled. She was still wearing that gorgeous red dress, but she had taken off her heels. Somehow, the sight of her pretty little bare feet was arousing. Thanks for coming, she smiled. No, not at all. Laguna felt like a total tool in his uniform. He really rather wished he had thought to change into his street clothes before coming here. Thank you for inviting me. Smooth. Please, have a seat, Julia swept out her arm, indicating to any spot in her room. Laguna nodded and walked past to one of the double beds. He took a seat at the foot of it. Wait a minute. She wasn't going to think he was taking liberties by sitting on her bed, was she? Maybe she thought he was being rude. Moving quickly, Laguna jumped up and walked over to one of the seats on the table set near the window offering an unparalleled view of the city. He took a more proper seat there only to look up and realize that Julia was laughing at him silently from behind her hair. And he was no more comfortable on the chair than he had been on the bed. He stood up quickly and walked over towards her instead. Still in front of the door, she thought he might be trying to leave. Going so soon? We haven't even talked yet. No, it's not that, Laguna shook his head, stopping before her. It's just that. I'm such a big fan of yours, you know. So I'm really kind of nervous. She smiled. So is that why you come to hear me play so often? Laguna's spine straightened suddenly in fear. Why you mean? You saw me. Julia nodded. Freaking out, Laguna started pacing quickly back and forth in the room. Because she had seen him. He had come to so many of her performances that she had recognized him. And now she probably thought he was a creepy stalker. You were always smiling while listening, she said softly, surprising him into stopping. You have beautiful eyes. Especially when you smile. They look a bit scared now though. She laughed gently at him again. Don't worry, I'm not going to puck em and eat em. I just want to talk. Gazing into those eyes. She walked over to her end table, completely comfortable with him already. Would you like a drink? Wine perhaps? I must be dreamin'. Laguna mumbled to himself in disbelief. Yeah, I don't really like fightin' too much. Laguna said, scratching his chin as his captive audience of one gazed at him from the foot of her bed. But I get to travel a lot, you know? Seeing new places and stuff. And it's fun, cause Kiros and Ward are always with me. Hey. We should all go out drinking sometime. What you say? Without giving her a chance to say anything, he rambled on. And, uh. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. 
So I'm going to quit the army the minute my mandatory service years are up so I can be a journalist. I want to be able to tell people about all the things I've seen on my travels. Well, he's loosened up. So, like, the other day, one of my articles made the reader's column in the Galbadian Gazette. Pretty cool, hey? Yeah, that was way cool. He nodded in agreement of his own statement. Julia smiled. I'm happy for you. Oh, yeah, and then... I'm so sorry, Julia was saying apologetically to Laguna who was now laid out on her bed. I didn't know wine made you sleepy. Laguna mumbled something as he opened his eyes up again. Julia giggled at him. You look adorable when you're asleep. Ugh, Laguna sat up, grabbing his head. How would I fall asleep? Oh, crap. He fell asleep. Manly charm at its best. Clearing his throat, he nearly jumped completely out of her bed. She was smiling at him from her place seated at the edge of the second bed. Up and around so soon. She smiled, her hands folded gently on her lap. I, uh, must have fallen asleep, he grimaced sheepishly. Talking on like that. So, tell me about yourself. Like, your dreams for the future. I... Julia hesitated. For the first time that night, she hesitated. Slowly, she stood from the bed and walked over to the window, trying to hide the blush creeping up on her face. I want to sing. Not just play the piano for the rest of my life. I want to sing, too. Oh, Laguna smiled. Her voice was already so melodic and sweet. I'd really love to hear it. But I can't, she continued, frowning at her hands. I'm no good at writing lyrics. Hmm, Laguna frowned, crossing his arms. That's a tough one. She turned and smiled brightly at him. But, thanks to you, I think I can come up with something. Hey? Thanks to me. Yes, she nodded once, stepping closer to him again. The many faces you've shown me. Times when you were hurt or worried or felt pain deep inside. Your smile, your laugh, your eyes. You've shown me something beautiful. I think I can come up with a song now. Wow. Laguna breathed, unsure what to say. I must be dreamin'. Julia reached out and took his hands in hers. Her big brown eyes turned up towards his and he fell deep into them. It's not a dream, is it? Laguna. Hard knocking sounded at the door. Shattering the moment, as Kiros called out to him. He sounded official. We've got new orders. We have to meet by the presidential residence on the double. Julia's smile turned sad but she didn't question his need to go. Can we meet again? She asked instead. Of course. Laguna beamed at her, twisting his hands so he was holding hers instead. I have to come back to hear you sing. Squall's eyes fluttered open to see Selfie's large boots shifting nervously in his sight. A ringing in his ears had him worried for a moment that he had been hit upside his head. But the ringing was followed by a robotic announcement. Next stop, Timber. Timber. Next stop, Timber. Timber. Squall's eyes opened fully and he pushed himself up. He felt tried and heavy. 
like he really might have just traveled between Timber and Galbadia in an incredibly old military jeep. He looked around to see Selfie and Zell both on their feet, looking to him. Selfie's eyes were wide with fear, Zell appeared nervous. Were we? Squall paused to clear his dry throat. Were we all asleep? Selfie nodded. Maybe someone released sleeping gas? Zell suggested, appearing uncomfortable at the thought. There's lots of people who resent seed. It was a possibility. Not one that Squall liked. Anyone missing anything? Selfie asked. Anyone hurt? They paused for a moment to check themselves. Squall could feel no pain anywhere. He felt for his pockets and belt pouches but everything was where he had left it. Shiva was still in his mind, crying out in wonder for where he had been. It was like his consciousness had been taken from his body in a way that not even sleep could mimic. I've got everything, Squall said finally. I'm not hurt, Zell agreed. Selfie let out a sigh. What a relief. Everything's cool with me. She giggled slightly as she turned and made her way to the L-shaped couch. She sighed dreamily as she took a prim seat on the edge. I had such a nice dream. Squall had a dream too. It wasn't nice though. He dreamt he was a moron. We will be arriving in Timber shortly, the train robot announced. For those getting off, please be sure to have all your belongings and children with you. Seriously though? Selfie continued to sigh in bliss. Sir Laguna was so oh oh cool. Hey. Zell jumped. There was a Laguna in my dream, too. He was a Galvadian soldier. Oh, Hein. Laguna, Squall said softly. Kiros. And Ward. Hey. Zell turned to him, wide-eyed. That's it. That's what? Squall asked, suddenly irritated about the whole conversation. That's the dream. Zell pointed at him. You had it too, right? The lounge. The girl. Julia, Squall supplied easily. Holy Hein. Zell looked like his mind had just been blown apart. That's it. What the heck is up with that? Selfie shook her head quickly. There's no way we can understand this. Let's just... Concentrate on our first mission. We have to do this right. She wasn't wrong. And Squall really didn't want extra confusion right now. He wanted things to be simple and focused. We'll put this incident on hold, he declared to his squad. I'll report it to the headmaster once we get back to garden and they'll do a sweep of the cabin to see if anything went wrong. For now, let's focus on helping the resistance. We're pulling up then, eh? Zell smiled, stretching. Here we go. Psyche yourself up, baby. Zell is coming to town. Squall was going to have to have a talk with him about calming down, he thought to himself as Zell left the private cabin. Selfie giggled as she stood to follow him. Still a little sleepy. Squall said nothing for a moment before following them out. He really didn't care to know. He just wanted to get this over with. His first seed mission. End of chapter.